This is me, the Undead Viking, and this is Age of Kingdoms. Uh, Age of Kingdoms. When I was contacted about uh, taking a look at this game, uh, I didn't really know much about it, but I didn't know the publisher, I didn't know the people that created it, and uh, I had played some other games by them that I was really, really impressed with, and so I was really excited to, to take a look at this. They kind of described it as as being um, like a, a, a more uh, fantastic version of like uh, the Game of Thrones type of it. And when I say fantastic, not like, oh, it's fantastic. I mean, like, like more fantasy based, if you will. Like, you know, being on the map, uh, negotiation, that sort of thing. And I was like, okay, that, that's up my alley. Let's check this thing out. So when I got it and I got the rules, um, yeah, I, I realized that this was going to be a really, really epic game to play. It was going to be a game that is going to take a while uh, to, 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 to turn through. It was a game that's going to have peaks and valleys and backstabbery and, and, and alliances and whatever. And I knew that I was going to like it. Um, so I played it. Uh, I played it again, and I played it again, and yes, uh, I thought the game was fantastic. So, um, it is a truly epic experience. It is it is something that's going to have a narrative, it's something that's going to um, tell you a story as you play, and it is something where you're going to see uh, your your kingdom rise and fall and, and what have you, and, and it's going to be very treacherous, uh, but also very rewarding uh, in the end. But let me show you uh, an overview of the rules, and then we'll come back here and I'll tell you more about Age of Kingdoms. All right, so this is Age of Kingdoms, and as I said uh, uh, in, in the introduction, this is an epic game, and I was very, very excited once I got the game and I started reading the rules, and I saw what you were able to do in this. And um, uh, and also, I mean, it, even though it's an epic game, you are able to, like, kind of uh, determine how long it's going to last. Now, this isn't a game where you're going to be knocking people off the board. This is a, um, a, a game of victory points, if you will, or, or as it's called, favor in the game, the favor of the gods that you're trying to get. Um, so if you want to have a longer game you can have all 20 seasons played 15 or 10 um, so you can definitely adjust that as you see fit uh, 15 is the standard game I, I, I played that mostly I did play a couple of quick games at 10 I never played a big long 20 uh, season game just because I didn't think I had the time to play it um, and, and also other things you know just going on but um, I, I would like to play a, a 20 season game at some point now you might have noticed that the 20 the 15th the 10 and the 5 um, you're going to see uh, located there are these little red bars and those red bars mean at those points you're going to have a world event that happens when world events happen what you're going to do is uh like you're going to draw one of these cards uh that is going to tell you just something is going to happen i am jumping around a little bit and i do apologize i'm probably not going to be able to go over the entire uh in the entirety of the rules um just because of the epic length but i'm hoping to give you a pretty good basis uh, of, of how the game works so uh, these cards uh, have the different um, like things that can happen: uh, economic triumphs, bandit warlords, um, towermen sightings. All of these just have some sort of world effect that you're going to have to contend with on that particular turn, if you will. So um, you know, and, and it isn't um, you know like one of those things where. Uh, it happens every single turn, which I kind of liked, you know, because sometimes when you have an event every single turn, there's so much for you to deal with um, as far as just the normal board, where, like, you're trying to determine what other people are doing and trying to fight against them, uh, that, you know, having a break, <laughs> if you will, uh, it does, you know, and also then you don't get used to all of them, right? Because, you know, this is a fair, you know, this isn't a huge deck, but it's enough cards that even with only having three events, you're not going to see everyone. You have no idea what's going to happen. Now, also during the world events phase, um, your the players themselves are able to do certain world events. Um, they can enter into trade agreements, uh, military agreements, they can declare war, perhaps their, their uh, kingdom gets sacked, and all of those have different effects as well, and I'll, talk, I'll touch on those here in just a little bit. Now, before the game begins, um, each person's going to get a location. You might notice that, like, there's, there's uh, just quickly, there's, like, these different locations, like Mesodrin, uh, Draco Gareth, the Highlands, Renoth, things like that. Those are the kingdoms that, um, people uh, will control. And then you're going to notice that there's also these darker ones like Windburn or Farnock or Nebelon over here. And those locations are territories that you can claim. Now these other little spots here, those are just kind of wilderness spots. Um, they're basically there to kind of, you can encounter other people in those locations. Uh, your armies can meet up, if you will. Uh, but uh, they're normally just you know, the, how much time it takes to go from one location to another, if you will. Uh, determining 
uh, the period of time. Now there's a couple other things quickly I just want to point out before we move forward. Um, there is this little spot here. This is the gate which allows you to contact other dimensions and gain uh, like access to them. Uh, and then you can use the power located there. I know, cool, right? I mean, this is, like I said, it's an epic game. Um, also, uh, there is over here, this is a port city that will allow you to actually go to different islands and investigate those uh, and, and control those. And I'll talk about that as well. What, you know, so you're going beyond this map, right? I mean, there's something larger here beyond this area, which I think is pretty cool. All right, so at the beginning of the game, each person is going to get one of, oops, one of these cards. Uh, this is basically your legacy bearer, your, your leader. Um, and these, they aren't, don't have names. These are kind of like icons, you know, like like the soul bender or, or the sorcerer, the sentinel or whatever. And you're going to get one of these and they're going to give you like a special ability you have. So like when you kill a unit, you're awarded a soul token, three soul tokens, maybe traded in for one glory at any one time. Uh, you know, the spell bond, you may hold one additional spell in your hand, different things like that. You get those special powers. And also they list these virtues and these spells you get. The virtues are these cards that have basically just special powers. And on the bottom, it'll tell you, you know, which legacy bearer has it. So this would be a gatekeeper. And these have different abilities and, that you have on there. And also uh, this is the spell cards. Now each person will have a certain spell deck and then you'll hear these like the sentinel uh, spells that you can see there and these are not the same like there's the Megalinder spells and what have you there's the star callers um, so all those are different in making each one of the different legacy bears uh, unique which I think is pretty cool all right so after that then you're gonna have you're gonna control one of those locations right and those locations also are going to have their own special things going on. So on this deck right here, um, this is like uh, these di different actions like that are significant to uh, that particular spot. And so like here is like uh, Draco Garath. Here I'll just turn. Uh, here is Nerefrain. Um, here's Renath. And like all of these are different things that you will have in your hand. And as long as you can pay to use them, you can enact their powers on your turn. And those will be a deck that you'll have in front of you. And you're only going to have a certain number of cards of those in your hand at any one time. Uh, but you will be going through them and, like, using them uh, for their special abilities. Uh, you know, just to help you out during those, like, you know, to, if you're having, like, a, a turn where you're going to be waging war, perhaps you'd be using special abilities to help you with that. Maybe you're using them to recruit or, or gather more food or what have you. So... Each person's going to get a deck of those, or like, and that's all of them put together. Like, these are all those put together. I didn't separate them. I just wanted you to see that. All right, so then, like, each person, like, is going to have, so, like, here's the Highlands, and they're going to have their their troops that they can they can uh, muster, if you will. And up here in the top, it tells you what it costs to recruit them, and then it gives you their, their powers. And I'll talk more about like how like how like what their attacks and strengths and whatever. I'll go over that more when I show you uh, how combat works, which is a relatively simple thing, but it is something that I, I want to go over a few. And like and and militia are like so here. Like let me show you like Renath here. So like as you can see, they both have the militia, but they do have their own special thing. So here they. They have warlocks and a fire guard, and here they have a warden and cavalry. So, like your your different uh, places are going to have different iconic uh, uh, military units uh, for them, which is something cool. It gives a flavor. It gives a fun little thing, if you will. All right. So uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was that. On these locations, uh, when you control them, if you can move into them and attack them and take them out, they themselves have it as well. So, like, Nebulon, like, has cultists that you can have, or, you know, and, so, and then they'll give you access to these. Um, and then so you'll be able to recruit more and more varied, um, uh, like, things into your army if, if you're able to get them, which is super cool. I mean, I can't say enough how like, cool it is that, like, you know, um, it kind of reminded me, in a, in a weird way, a little bit of the old game Titan, if you will, where you kind of moved out on the board and that allowed you to collect uh, cool and, and new units that you got to add to your, your army, which is also uh, super cool as well. All right, um, the other thing uh, with that... <laughs> you're making things even more different is that remember those cards there these locations also have their own cards as well that you could add to your deck so like nebulon has these special abilities as well uh you know you know mool shield all of those 
black locations uh, on there. If you control those territories, you get to add these cards to your deck. So once again, crazy cool things that you get to do as you move out. All right, so now I wanted to show you just a player board. So, okay, a player board looks pretty straightforward. Um, each person at the beginning will get access to three workers. They get three workers and on their turn, they're gonna be able to place them on these different locations to do certain actions. Now, all of these spots are available to you at any given time. So if you wanted to go full on like uh, gold, you could place all three of your workers on those locations. If full on food, whatever, you can do these things. Um, this top row up here, you're always going to get that. You're always gonna get two gold, you're always gonna get two food and so on and so forth. But it's up to you to decide what you wanna use uh, to increase it. Now I'm gonna talk about those here again, just a little bit, but let me just move forward a little further. Now this is your stability phase. Um, you always, the stability in green is better. You gain stability, um, you know, a lot of ways, like, you know, like there's different ways, different uh, special powers and what have you uh, that will I'll give you access to them, but you can see how, like, the, notice that, like, the, the different levels of stability allows you to do certain things. So, like, here, um, like, patrols, like, gives you a bonus to s stability, meaning, like, you know, basically you're patrolling your, 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 your area and you're helping, uh, you know, do that. But as the game progresses, you're going to have situations where there's going to be revolts or going to war, like, obviously, would, like, decrease stability. And so you're going to be wanting to keep your stability up as much as possible just so you have access to do uh, bigger and better things as it goes. Now, down here, uh, this is if you want to, um, like, you, you can increase the number of workers you have, but then, uh, like, it's going to cost you more food because you can see... There's the upkeep of, of like one food, two food, three food, and four food. The more workers you have, the more you have to feed them. And if you can't feed them, unfortunately, then your people starve, which of course was probably going to cause some unrest, and you're also going to lose that worker and what have you. But as the game progresses, that's how that happens. Now, you might have noticed that like it has all these things where it's like a cost to upgrade. Now, each person is going to get all of these tiles that allow them to uh, increase like certain things. So if you wanted to, and let me make sure I grab the right one. So like say you have the markets one and then plus one to active trade route, like plus one active trade route. If you wanted to upgrade that, you'd pay the three gold and then you would have markets two. And then it says plus two. And then if you like, then you would flip that over if you tr increase it again. And so then you'd have that all the way up. And then that would just basically upgrade what you can do. And then you'd be able to place your worker on there um, to do that. Now your workers, the weird thing about when you're placing the workers is that once you put them on the board, they're kind of stuck there doing that action. Um, your workers kind of like just um, like the stability of, of being able to do the, the, the same thing every single turn. They, they like that. Um, and actually, you have to actually pay a stability like you, you to basically move your workers uh, to a different spot to have them work. So make sure you keep that. Stability is, 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 a, is, a, is a resource that you need to maintain in the game. Um, and it, it, is, it is one of the nice things about the game is like you can actually look at other persons where they're, where they're at uh, with how, how stable uh, they are in here. And you can kind of see, well, th can they risk going to war? You know, right now, can they risk doing things that are going to cause them, uh, you know, to to have problems further down the line? And so you can kind of use that. And this is definitely a game of open information and definitely a game of conversation and what have you. Um, the treasury can normally contain five of any resource. And I should mention that like resources are just kept in like uh, you you have them in a. Let me just show you here quickly. Uh, you just like here is like gold resources and then you just keep these cardboard chits and then you spend them you keep in the treasury they can hold five of any one uh income on any one resource like this, you, at, at any time if you have more than that you lose it but you can increase uh your treasury and like be able to hold more uh if you like so i mean just you keep that in mind but so everybody has that and over here also i should mention uh there are the trade routes um so when you have trade routes what, what happens with those is that you actually uh ask somebody if they want to be involved in a trade route and if both you agree um i don't have I, I, you'd have cubes and i'm sorry i don't have my cubes in my hand right now but you place cubes in either one of these locations showing that like in the and it does dictate who you can have you can be have trade routes with and so like you can say like uh, Nerefane or Renath, you can have there. Um, and a neutral is just like basically a neutral government that doesn't really exist. You can't really say anything about them. And Apolesis. And so 
And then you can have, like, basically the trade routes with them. And you notice that, like, Epilesis is a far, long ways away uh, from the highlands over there. Um, you know, but where, like, Renath is right next to the highlands. So that's why it's easier. Now, the you have to pay the cost that's listed right there in order to do it. But it also, um, the, the higher the cost level for the trade route, the better the trading can be. You can trade more uh, between the two of you with... with, with a better or a bigger and better uh, trade route. All right, so I'm, I'm, I haven't even talked about the phases of the game, but I, and I will here in just a moment. I want to show you one last thing before I talk about those. Uh, uh, is that the, I mentioned uh, like uh, like islands and what have you that, that you that you uh, uh, kind of dig out and you you find or whatever. Um, so like here you have, and I'm just gonna. These, these different locations, if you will. And notice how they're not on the map. You don't have a separate map for these, you know, so it's like, uh, like these are like the, the these cards here represent uh, both the different um, like dimensions that you can go and investigate and also the different islands that you can go investigate. And if these are the ones, if you become the person uh, that um, like, you know, controls these and and takes them up you you gain like certain uh powers and abilities for 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 doing that and like and people of course though can can you know steal these from you as well but so you want to actually be able to like um protect them if you can but i mean it could be something as simple as you know getting different resources that you get bonuses of uh, like even like a plus one resource um every single turn this mom is overrun by a strange native tribe we're happy to gift visitors with wonders that they promise to return and so then you would take control of that um but where some of it's like uh constructs in this place all things are designed assembled and recreated even flesh is material to be mended if desired every income phase remove one wound from a unit you control so they give you know, a varied uh abil like abilities and bonuses and those are available to everyone. You everybody can see them, but obviously the person that controls them is going to get that bonus. All right, so I, <laughs> there we go. That's 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 like kind of a brief overview of of everything uh, that this game has. Um, I, I should mention that. Uh, the, the Kickstarter has super cool looking miniatures. Um, I did not have super cool looking miniatures, which, you know, didn't make the game, uh, any worse. Uh, um, I just had little standees for, for my, that, you know, would represent uh, the different, uh, people that would fight and, and what have you. But regardless, uh, you know, the game works just fine. But if you want to see the super cool minis, I do suggest going to the Kickstarter and checking those out. All right, so... Now then, so after uh, all that uh, and telling you exactly what's uh, what, what's going on, how does the game work? Well, okay, so the first thing that happens is the world event phase. Um, that means that if somebody want to get, if you want to be in a trade agreement or a military agreement or declare war, or it is season five, ten, fifteen, or twenty, um, then you're going to have that particular uh, those those things happen. Uh, then you enter your kingdom phase. And then in your kingdom phase, what you're going to do is you're going to get any income that you have. You get the top bar that's on those and any, any of those spots that you have workers on. Uh, you're going to get all that income. And then you're going to have to pay the yeah, upkeep. So if you have um, if you have workers to feed or if you have units that you have to uh, maintain, you have to do those. And you have to make sure that you uh, take care of them. Uh, during also, uh, like after that's done, you have the kingdom actions that allow you to do a lot of different things. You can play one of your agenda cards uh, that you have. And you can also, if, if you don't like the agenda cards that you have, uh, you can pay a gold to draw a new agenda card. Um, you can uh, play play one of your spell cards, but if you don't like uh, the spell cards that you have, you can pay a magic to draw a new one. Uh, you can move any of your workers uh, to the new spots if you want to. Notice that that isn't going to change what you, you your income's already been given to you, so it, it's going to change it for the next season, not this particular season. Uh, you can pay the recruitment cost to get a new worker. Uh, you can pay through food to increase your population by one, uh, and you can pay the cost to establish a trade route, or pay the cost to upgrade a kingdom tile. And those are all things that you can do. Um, so then after you're done with that, you're going to have like your map phase. And during the map phase, you, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be moving your units around on the board and giving orders and then most likely getting into fights. But just, I mean, I'm going to talk about combat last, so I'm just going to show you the dice and how that works um, here in just a little bit. But then after that particular phase is done, you're going to have your trade phase. And so after you've done everything on the map, 
uh, you're going to uh, talk about your trade routes and you can use like those trade routes. So if you have a neutral one with nobody, you can basically just exchange uh, one of your resources. You could exchange like one food for uh, one gold if you had an excess, if you will. Um, but then other than that, trade routes are just dealt with you and the other players as you see fit. You have a lot of open negotiation and, and conversations and you're just going to uh, decide between you and them uh, what's worth. You know, like, I'll give you three food if you give me two magic, things like that. You're going to be talking to those people, but you have to have those trade routes set up. You can't just do it however you like, if you will. All right, so finally, no no good dudes on a map game uh, is complete without having uh, battles. So I just want to show you a card here just so you can kind of see. So here we have uh, the Fire Guards of, of Renath. And so the Fire Guards, so just it says here, um, like the first thing obviously just tells you uh, what these things are. And then it, this is the cost to recruit it. So in this case, it would be a food, uh, a gold, and two magic to get a Fire Guard. So then, uh, going down here, this will tell you like the different things. So that is their movement ability. Uh, this right here, uh, this little with the two, this is the combat strength. Then this is their defense strength. This is the amount of damage that it will deal. And this is the amount of damage that it can take before it is destroyed. And if it has any kind of unique ability, um, it'll be listed here. So in this case, um, it's ranged. You may attack units on an adjacent space, so they can, you know, which is also always awesome. And then uh, backdraft. All enemy units in the same location as the defender also suffer one damage. So like that's the special ability that it has. And you'll notice that like um, it has this little star in there, and that is important. So we'll talk about that in just a little bit. So. Um, Obviously, uh, once you recruit them, you just kind of put the card in front of you, and then you're, you'll have your standee out there uh, doing battle uh, or moving about the board, taking control of different areas, and and you know fighting them and, and you know trying to control uh, either these these neutral areas uh, or territories, I should say, or you know invading other people's. Now, I should mention that um, you can't enter enter into somebody's lands until you actually declare war on them, or if you have an agreement that that is all right. So just keep that in mind that you, you, you it isn't like you can just run, like move a bunch of people into somebody else's place and then declare war and like be able to sack them immediately. It's, it's, that's just not the option. Uh, combat is, is, is really simple. So, um, I, you know, so let's just say, you know, we have, you know, a, a fire guard and I'll just grab here one of these Highland guys. Let's Let's see this Highland Cavalry here. So if these two were fighting, one person would be the attacker and one person would be the defender. And so uh, so like if we say the fire guard is attacking the cavalry, um, what will happen is is that they will roll uh, their, you would roll their attack uh, and then compare it to defense. And so you don't roll the number of dice, so like they have a two, so the fire guard has a two attack and you're gonna roll that and you're gonna add the two to that. Now, you're also going to roll their special because, bam, you actually got the special. If there was another unit on that spot, the special would come into a play if that, if that was the case. So now they then would have a total of four attack and my cavalry has a defense of one. So I'm gonna roll my defense die. I'd have a two, three, but I'd still take one wound. And we'd look at this as I can take five wounds. And so we would mark the fact that we would wound. And now I would be able to do my counter attack. Battles will last a little while because of the fact that you have this ebb and flow of back and forth. Plus there's also going to be lots more than just, you know, usually more than one unit uh, on, on a certain spot. Um, you're going to have several units uh, having doing battle. But the whole point is, is that you are trying uh, to, to fight them off and destroy other people's units. Now, Destroying somebody's or sacking somebody's home place is entirely different. Uh, when you do that, you actually have uh, this garrison uh, like power, if you will. And uh, I, I should mention also um, that these are commands. Like, like the, you need you need uh, command tokens to be able to control and and like lead your troops, if you will. So the more command tokens you have, the better. But I just I, I forgot to mention that as far as when you're recruiting uh, the different units. But just remember that that you need those. But regardless. Uh, the defenses um, like it will increase obviously the like if you will and if you have um, somebody and these are not like uh, I shouldn't like the, this isn't something you um, 
uh, how do I put it? Like, it, it isn't like a, an income, if you will. It's a stat, right? So, like, if you had that and you, and you had a worker on forts, um, you would have a total of a four garrison. And that is, as long as there isn't anybody fighting them, so, like, let's say, you know, like, Renath had, had defeated all of the Highlands uh, things, and Renath, you know, had troops. Let me just make sure I can just grab one of these standees here. And it had troops in the Highlands. And they would be able to attack the garrison, and they would be doing damage to the garrison of that location. And as long as the Highlands weren't able to recruit anything to fight them, or the Highlands weren't able to convince somebody else to come over and help them with a military uh, agreement, if you will, then, you know, like, eventually, if they were able to defeat the garrison and destroy it, then they would sack the, the Highlands, and then, obviously, you gain a lot of favor for that. Um, if... But remember, and here's one thing, I want to say this before I go to my conclusion here. Um, let me find the card here for war. So, the big thing is, is that when somebody declares war on somebody else, you'll notice that it lasts five turns. So, somebody says, I'm going to war against you, that means they have five turns to sack their, uh, their, 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 their home uh, spot. And if they're unable to do that, and the defender manages to remain uh, undestroyed, then uh, you would be able to then, uh, like, they would get the favor a favor bonus and, and not the attacker. And so it's kind of neat that, like, it's, 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 it's a risk, right? I mean, not only is it a risk to attack somebody just because, you, you know, you might, you might fail, but you might be giving them points uh, when, you, when you fail to do so, which I think is really cool. Anyway, so uh, I hope that that gives you a pretty good idea of how the game works, and 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 you know, and and there is like a structure as far as like the the turn order, um, you know. So it's always good to kind of see what the other people are doing. Sometimes it's better to go first. Sometimes it's better to go last. Those sorts of things. Um, but let me talk about that and all about uh, Age of Kingdoms uh, in my final thoughts. All right, there you go. That is Age of Kingdoms. That's right side up. Good, good, good. All right, so. Um, you know, I, I just, I guess I, I, I kind of went over a lot of the reasons why I like the game uh, in my in my uh, rules overview portion. But let me just touch on a couple things really quick. Um, there's so many things about it that I really, really liked. Uh, the asymmetrical setup of each of the different, uh, like, locations as far as where they are and what they can do. Um, you know, I... Not everything is asymmetrical, obviously, like each kingdom kind of has their own kind of build-up that is, is, is roughly the same. Um, but definitely the place in the map and where they're at is definitely going to have an effect on what, are they, what they're going to do and where they're going to go. Uh, the different territories that are nearest to them and like that they're, gonna, they're most likely going to gain control of um, faster than the others. Um, the fact that like a lot of the places that are like in the middle that are going to be in conflict a lot quicker, um, they have access to like say like the harbor a lot faster and things like that so um i did find that like it was it, it, it seemed like certain places would have uh, a, a bonus or they would they would they would have a leg up if you will but ultimately it that just wasn't the case it was just you know it was set up very very well as far as that's concerned also the different like units and the different powers and the different agendas that you were able to use um also just really like made for a fun game it really just made for uh situations where uh, you know, no two games, you hear this all the time, no two games will ever be the same. Well, I mean, you can say that about anything, right? But this one, it really did. I mean, it was like, it was like a definitive story. And, and each one of the different locations, uh, you know, wherever they happen to be, they have just things that they're better at to do the cards that they have. Some will be more warlike, some will be more about the air, their economies and things like that and it's really cool that you don't have to be um like this this giant like you you can be a turtle right and just kind of stay within yourselves and be working on little uh, trade agreements with other people and gaining glory and things like that you don't have to be uh, a warlike nature to 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 win um but definitely there are certain uh uh, uh, there, there are certain uh, lo locations that, um, you know, beginning-wise, just lend themselves to that. So each player will have kind of their own build, if you will, for lack of a better term. But there's, you're not, you're not pigeonholed into it. You can branch out and do what you want, and that's kind of like what, what I really liked about it. It's just the variability of everything. Uh, the fact that, like, you, obviously, the, the different legacy bearer, the leader that you have, you know, is different for each one because that's that's a random situation, and it's just it's it's 
just a lot of fun. I mean, like I said, I, I dig dudes on a map games. I, I just, I like the idea of seeing uh, the, the, the world, you know, being populated and, you know, having, seeing the, the different people uh, and the different units and the different militaries moving about and going to war. It just, it, it, it's very evocative and very, it, it just, it's one of those things where I, I, the tension of, of like not knowing who I can trust and what's going to happen, you know, in any given turn, it just, it adds up to just a fun experience. Whether you win or lose, it's just an exciting time. And, and so, um, and I, and I did like the fact that like the combat, you know, was important, but it wasn't the end all be all, if that makes sense. It, it wasn't something where you had to be warlike to win. You, you definitely could have games where you could barely fight, but still end up winning the end of the game because you, you were able to garner the most favor of the gods um, through other actions other than uh, warfare. So if that seems like it's your boat, uh, I strongly suggest you go ahead and check out Age of Kingdoms. I think you will be very, very pleasantly uh, surprised. Not I shouldn't say surprised. You'll be very, very pleasantly pleased <laughs> i don't know you'd be very happy with it if you if you play it if, if this is their type of game um so there you go if you have any questions about age of kingdoms please ask away i'll be happy to answer those as best as i can as always thank you very much for taking the time to watch this video and until next time i'm the undead viking and i'm telling you to have yourself one heck of an awesome day all right bye-bye